thanks a lot uh, and welcome to Pax Europeana. This is Günther here, the day before the EU Council meeting, the important one here in, also in Brussels, I'm in mean Vienna, but in Brussels a lot of important things will be on the agenda. And I wanna give here my clear message of what should be done, how to answer the Russian aggression, how to really be more united and what we need to do here in the European Union, in NATO Europe and what we need to achieve. I will cover most of the important issues uh, and I will cover the economics, the security and the defense and I hope there will be decency in Brussels and we have a conclusive and uh, decisive summit with really good results uh, for Europe um, because we are under heavy pressure and we need to act. Yeah? We need of course to prepare uh, the year 2023, the year of victory for Ukraine, for more unity of Europe. We have achieved a lot, it's uh, very, very difficult. We've achieved the EU candidate status of Ukraine, uh, the EU status, uh, candidate status of Moldova. We are now, tomorrow will be uh, the decision as well, and it's already confirmed for Bosnia to be EU candidate country. At this moment, uh, Kosovo is applying uh, for uh, the EU candidate status. And that's a lot of achievements, that's a lot of progress. We have, of course, also Sweden, Finland joining NATO, and this is very good. I hope there will be now an um, agreement with Turkey and to be found that with Hungary, and with Hungary seemingly there is settlement because the Hungarians are close to bankruptcy and they have now been saved by the European Union. I always cannot understand why the EU is not insisting for Hungary to also join the Eurozone immediately as part of this Saving Hungary deal. Because if we bail out Orban with our money, why don't we say, hey guy, stop this for rent, it's a disaster. And you are, <coughs> 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 sorry, I'm still a bit sick, but I'm getting better and Europe will get better very soon. And more unity is the way. So what we need to do, Orban, please, yeah, you manipulate your currency, your country and uh, your uh, Europe. Okay, we can squeeze you, but what we of course have is the tool is the euro. So that takes a lot of power from such kind of pit pot dictators like Orban away and it liberates the people because it's no, contro uh, no longer controlling the economic tool, the main economic tool, the currency. So that we should insist. And that should be also in that debate I was not successful uh, to convince everybody how important the euro is in Poland, in Czech Republic, in Romania. <laughs> Romania, my friends, I fight for you <laughs> all the time. And I try to make the best here to break the Austrian Schengen veto. I'm very unpopular in Austria now, but I try to do that. And I uh, don't see the effect on Romania because instead uh, you're turning uh, whatever you're skeptic or what? <laughs> no, you should be the first one uh, to be on the moral high ground and uh, joining the Euro like uh, Croatia has done successfully. That is obviously a big tool for economic integration and that's what Romania should do. Kosovo, by the way, should be recognized by Romania and I got some uh, negative feedback now on my YouTube uh, videos and I cannot understand why Romania is still blocking that because uh, the fear for Transnistria to break away, anyhow it broke away in 91 and it's uh, now at the moment it's the most integrated because they are very careful now in Transnistria that the Ukrainians are not uh, delivering on their offer uh, to crack down and disarm the uh, Soviet Russian troops which are still there in Transnistria and the Ukrainians could easily do that because they are on the winning stream now and they have now uh, entered uh, Militopol, they are in the shaping operation and you will see they are able to fight in the winter and uh, it will be the Russians who uh, will be very, very harmed by the winter fighting conditions because their economy is not on the modern level to produce modern equipment able to fight under winter conditions. So what we see now, what we have to do for this summit, of course, you break the Austrian veto. <laughs> But Romania, you could do the thing <laughs> with uh, Kosovo, with the Euro, and it would be also good if Bulgaria joins the Eurozone. That would be <laughs> fantastic, wouldn't it? Because then we have much more countries into the Eurozone and it is changing the currency reality. And what I'm proposing now since September 2021, when I launched my public activities in Austria with my first big op-ed in the Presse, I have 
uh, made uh, this uh, proposal for uh, Serbia to get the euro uh, for recognition of Kosovo. That would have been a wonderful idea. It was not to be done. Now, instead of Europe making offers, again, it's American hard power which uh, keeps Kosovo safe for because uh, Serbia really would like to open a southern front. Yeah? And they were close to doing it. Uh, but uh, the Americans have uh, mobilized, basically, there's a lot of American military activity in the Mediterranean. Several of the aircraft carrier groups are now in the Mediterranean, and the message is not lost to anybody. Yeah? They are ready to strike. They are ready to strike and to mobilize American might uh, for the defense of European freedom all over again if it's necessary. And it's not uh, to be underestimated. And yeah, of course, uh, Biden is very careful, but now he has the majority in the Senate and he is, of course, here to win. And he will defend Ukraine and he will send the Patriots now. And that's very good. Yeah? And the Europeans are again very slow to get things done. It's good we're sending generators and all the other stuff and this conference in Paris. Mr. Macron did a good um, conference and, you know, and there is a lot of things uh, done and we um, sent this uh, 18 billion for Ukraine now in 2023. That's all a substantial amount of money, but it's about, I would say, 1% of what is needed um, to cover all the costs uh, reasonable, not, uh, not only for Ukraine, but uh, Ukraine's reconstruction over the decade will cost 750 billion. That's the estimation and to bring it on European level and to integrate it in the EU in this decade. And of course, then you see that the cost of the Balkans uh, infrastructure, energy shock uh, integration, and of course, Georgia and uh, Moldova. Then you see the uh, economic war wa uh, Russia wages against Europe. And we have uh, huge effects in our economic social system. So that must be also somehow paid. And we can, of course, pay it via our common EU debt. And it's a big strategic mistake that the liberals are now not, uh, you know, fighting the ghosts of the past and, you know, against euro bonds, Mr. Lindner, you know, that's all pretty nice in peacetime. You can say, no, no, we don't want to fund the Greeks. And so that's all mm, part of the FTP mythos, I understand. But the reality is we are at war now and <laughs> you cannot ignore the reality and we need money for that one. And it's much better to fund uh, this costs of the economic war and of the real war in uh, Europe um, uh, today again in 2022 together united and it's much fairer to share it for all uh, the costs uh, all the tax policy is easier it's also much more justified <coughs> and much more efficient and it will make Europe much more united and I say again every single just piece of this puzzle uh, which we have done some, uh, has really a big effect. Every recognition of Kosovo counts. We didn't achieve a single one this year. That was a big, big mistake, uh, a failure. Every um, new NATO member, we have at least two, um, almost uh, close, yeah? very good. Whereas Ireland, whereas Austria, and this uh, reach, uh, really, uh, Malta <laughs> should have been done, and it's not. And that's something we need to fix in 2023 because we need to get Austria, Malta, Ireland, also the <coughs> <coughs> also Moldova yeah, and all the countries and Kosovo and Bosnia, obviously, in NATO. Every NATO member is an uh, endorsement of our agenda. It keeps America stronger in Europe and it's very important uh, to, um, uh, to put the finger in the eye of uh, Putin that we will not um, somehow submit uh, to a Russian Europe or he is not deciding who joins what and who does what in Europe. No, 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 he might in Russia, but I come to that. I have made already a lot of statements that some of you might think, oh, that's quite extreme that I'm for the dismantlement of Russia, but never forget Austrian Hungarian monarchy was dismantled as a response uh, to them starting the war and losing it. Yeah? So starting a war and losing it, for empire, of course, uh, the question of structural stability must uh, be posed. Yeah? And it was uh, the same for the Ottoman Empire. It was in many aspects as well for the British and French Empire, for the Portuguese Empire in Angola. You know, all these empires, we have so many of them. And also for the Soviet Empire and for the Yugoslavian, basically the Serbian Empire. So all these things have to become, but that's a different topic. I don't want to dwell too much on it because I will work in 2023 a lot on that one. And you will hear a lot about new countries uh, from Dagestan to Buratia to Karelia. That will be a big story. 
But now let's focus what has to happen next week and next uh, tomorrow actually. And here the answer, I was very happy in the run up of this summit, there was a big debate about our trade system and I'm ultimately an economist, a trade economist turned now political activist, but the situation is like this, that we need to open to the world. And this was the big mistake of our last decade. We have closed, closed, closed under French protectionism and German timidity. We have not really achieved a lot. It's just a free trade agreement with Canada. It's now ratified even in Germany. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> Took a decade, well, or half a decade. So we need, of course, the trade agreements uh, with uh, ASEAN. Today is the ASEAN summit with the United States of America, with Mercosur, and I hear the Germans are now committed to ratify the Mercosur agreement. The government uh, is committed. That's really a major breakthrough. That's very substantial. And now I hope the summit today with ASEAN, that's the Association of Southeastern European Countries, really 600 million people, very important, full of resources, full of people, great market, great people. They are a bit neutral in this war because they are shocked what's happening in Europe. But uh, they are, of course, they want to trade. And we have blocked them for what reason? For palm oil. Palm oil was the big issue. Uh, some uh, French groups have imposed on the world uh, that we cannot conclude because of palm oil. Yeah? You know, no matter what, but this is such a small minor issue on the bigger issue. You can regulate things in our product safety and in our food safety um, regulation. We don't need to do protectionist stopping of uh, FDAs because of that. Yeah, it's really so bad. <laughs> yeah, now that is, I think we will have a breakthrough on ASEAN. The African Union, even America, signs now a uh, African American um, uh, kind of MOU for starting negotiations. Also, there's a lot of protectionism in America, so the Biden administration is not for FDAs, we are not for FDAs, so we are all failing. <laughs> but the normal thing is to put everything on a regulated trade uh, system, uh, on a systematic re We regulate everything. Why shouldn't we regulate our trade relation with America in one document? Yeah? I mean, please give me a break. Yeah? It's so intellectually inferior, this kind of populist protectionist debate. Uh, same like the Austrians ones uh, against Schengen and so on. So that's the logic, open to the world, Mercosur, TTIP and uh, ASEAN, the most important, but also Australia. We don't have an agreement with Australia, by the way, and it took us along for New Zealand, that's now happening, and so on and so on. So it's really quite astonishing. And the Gulf Corporation Council, Uzbekistan, all these agreements, which we should have under normal circumstances already a decade ago, but we had lost a decade and then uh, we should do these things. Yes, of course, uh, the EU candidate status of Kosovo, there is no doubt that should also come very soon for the Spring Council and then also a big debt package uh, to fund uh, the war, uh, fund the energy transition and uh, decouple from Russia and open to the world. This will all cost uh, something. That must be now kind of a big debt package. I proposed one and a half trillion in the beginning of the year. Now I'm calling for two trillion because uh, prices are rising and the cost of the war is rising. And, you know, do we really want to have a very long war? I say no. Let's uh, conclude it with NATO membership of Ukraine. And if Russia wants then attack Ukraine, okay, then let's make war um, and defend our NATO allies, now our EU candidate country. And, you know, Russia cannot really uh, win against us. No way. They cannot even fight against us. They will have to settle for uh, some kind of draw on the 23rd of February lines and uh, we will liberate all the 2022 uh, occupied territories together with Ukraine and uh, this will be the armistice line and it will come that way, I'm confident. Yeah? And then we integrate um, uh, Ukraine into NATO on a fast track procedure like uh, Western Germany was done in 55. I say since many years, this would have been the best way. We could have avoided all this terrible war and all these costs if you had listened to me already since 2017, but you were not, huh? and you thought it's good to buy Russian gas because it's so cheap. Add the two trillion of this war uh, on an average basis on the European savings, yeah? there will be not a lot of savings lost. <laughs> yes good or not so good. Anyhow, that's the cost of bad policy and we have so much of it in the last decade uh, since uh, the Americans have withdrawn under the second Obama administration in 2013. 
from a world governance in a dramatic way and it took Biden a lot of effort to re somehow shape things in a decent way and it is extremely costly so I'm very much uh, for uh, American uh, world order. Pax Europeana obviously is uh, then in line with uh, Pax Americana. We are implementing uh, together a decent um, value-based uh, foreign policy and economic and global security order which will work and last for another 30 years and will also survive uh, the complication of the breakup of the Russian Federation. Good. How to do it? Now, then my campaign next year, also when I talk already after the summit, because let's see what really will be achieved. Hopefully <laughs> the Schengen veto will be broken, but hopefully also then uh, we will have uh, the clear support uh, for Ukraine. That seems to be happening. And uh, there is hopefully then also a better trade agenda on the horizon. But for 2024, we have to be more ambitious beyond trade and beyond uh, the debt package for Ukraine's victory. We need also that the EU itself joins uh, NATO. And this is, of course, the next big step for statehood. This is, of course, the next big state uh, for unification. We will be EU of 37 member countries by 2029. We integrate the six Western Balkan countries after Serbia's Western turn, hopefully, hopefully, <laughs> hopefully happening soon. But uh, the others will uh, join and uh, Serbia will be isolated if it doesn't join NATO before. And then we have also Ukraine, Moldova and Georgia. And we conclude the trade agreements and then the return of the United Kingdom is absolutely doable. And then we will be uh, 37 countries and we will be the United States of Europe and we will also be in NATO. And it will be the EU flag <laughs> raised at the NATO headquarters. <laughs> and all these uh, funny neutrals like Austria and uh, like Malta, Ireland, better join NATO or leave. Yeah? We don't need any annoyances, any complications. Yeah? If, you don't, if you're not ready to be in solidarity, if you want to be uh, immoral neutral, then go back to Blocher, Switzerland and uh, join EFTA. But I'm sure the Norwegians will come to the real European Union of solidarity, morality, of defense and security. They are serious and they will come once we are getting serious. And by the way, Austria, sell <laughs> your assets in Romania to the Norwegians because we are seemingly incapable. <laughs> but the whole crisis seem had to have had uh, some effect. The Austrians have been playing ball now in uh, Romania <laughs> in some of the issues. <coughs> Anyhow. For tomorrow, my message is clear. It should be broken, the Austrian veto, because it's egocentric, rich uh, country populism against the poorer country, uh, decency, who have really worked hard to fulfill all the requirements. And if you are a rule-based union and not um, just might is right, I'm the old rich bully in the club and I impose my will on the poorer, uh, newer comers. I hope we are not that kind of union, so let's see for that. And then hopefully anyhow the Austrian government will fall because they have um, been abusing their power completely and that was absolutely unacceptable. So then obviously um, I call again, uh, not just on moral unification grounds, but it not just because it's my pet topic, but I, in Kosovo I lived many years and in uh, Montenegro I invested and it was uh, really wonderful to have the euro as currency and it's the best thing for Albania it's the best thing uh, for Bosnia, it's the best thing for Macedonia, for Moldova, for Ukraine, uh, for um, Georgia, and also for Poland, for um, uh, Czech Republic, and for Hungary. All countries, and Sweden should also do that, Denmark. That's completely without understanding that countries don't use the euro. Obviously, more countries in would also be deflationary. <laughs> it will be also more economically efficient to have the same currency. I mean, now 20 years <laughs> we have the euro and it's working the prosperity has increased and it is tremendous success and why we have not uh, had such a big success in some areas is not because of the euro just that don't get that wrong but because we still have kept the high tech system of western europe uh, in italy and <laughs> in <laughs> france because you need to be competitive in a market you need to compete for investment you need also to compete to grow and uh, that uh, the many countries in Western Europe have not done. The uh, low-tax countries 
And it was not a secret. Everybody knew it in the 2000s. And when Miklos came into the European Parliament during the Slovak accession, he said it very clearly and everybody understood it. It was what we always said in 2000, uh, 2002, in the time I worked in the European Parliament, uh, SME, EPP. It was very, very clear. And it is <coughs> <coughs> now I feel very vindicated. Anyhow, <coughs> I think <coughs> I will be fine. I want to make a last statement. Austria, don't veto <laughs> Romania <laughs> and Romania recognize Kosovo. And Let's all be united in NATO, EU, and the Euro. Thanks a lot. Good luck for the summit and for a better, stronger, more united Europe allied with America in TTIP and in NATO. Thanks a lot. All the best. More to come from Pax Europeana. Thanks for the subscription and please follow me on Twitter. Bye.